Hi and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can display your products by categories using the product category list widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With it, you can create a category display that, when a visitor clicks on it, all products belonging to that category would be shown. The page we're looking at right now contains some examples of how you can style and use this widget. You have different possibilities, such as varying cover effects, different text styles and layouts, several button types, and more. Additionally, you can combine the product category list widget in a multitude of ways with any of the other widgets in the key add-ons collection. So, let's see how all of this works behind the scenes. Head over to the back end. And in the Elementor sidebar, search for a product category list. Here it is. Drag it over to the page. And right away, the widget generates a list of all the product categories that you've created on your site. These are mine. They include the uncategorized category, which is generated by WooCommerce by default. During the course of the video, I'll show you how to set which categories will be shown in your list. For now, if we go to the Products and then Categories section of the WordPress dashboard menu, we can see all my categories listed out. This is also the place you'd go to to edit a category or to make a new one. This is done simply by setting a name, adding a slug, and this is optional, inputting a description. Then you can upload an image that would represent the category, like a featured image. Then hit the Add New Category button at the bottom and your new category with its image will be displayed in this list. And when you refresh the page, it will appear in this list as well. Okay. That's our foundation, so once we have that ready, we can start in on the widget options. The first thing we can change is the list appearance. It's set to gallery by default, and that gets us the look we can see on the right. However, you can switch this to masonry and it will display the posts with an asymmetrically tiled look. The images are of various sizes and they are arranged so as to fill up the space neatly. However, given my plan design, I'm going to switch back to the gallery list appearance. OK. Then our next option is image proportions, where we can pick how we want our images to be displayed. There are several options such as thumbnails, portraits, squares. Let's see that one. And there. The images are reduced to squares even though their original proportions were different. OK. Since I want to keep the images original, I'll switch this back. After that, we have the number of columns option. You can pick anything from 1 to 8. I'll keep mine set to 3. Below that, we have the columns responsive option. This lets us decide how many columns will be shown on a range of different screen widths. You can keep it predetermined or you can pick custom, which lets you decide on the number for each particular range. The first two screen sizes here are for laptops. We don't have an option for the largest screens, the ones that are about 1920 pixels wide, because the number of columns shown on them is determined by the number of columns option we looked at earlier. So, for the range of widths that apply to laptops, I'll leave the number of columns set to 3. But then, for the remaining widths, I'll set 1. Alright. Below that, we have the space between items option. It lets us adjust these gaps here between the different product categories. You can make changes using this slider, like so, or you can type in a value. I'll set 27 pixels for mine. This brings us to the next section, the query. The first option here is for adjusting the number of posts per page. Basically, this is how many items you can have in your product category list. By default, it's 9, but I'll change it to 3. And there, my list became much shorter. After that, we can pick which criterion will be used for ordering the posts in the list. By default, it's set to date, but you can replace that with any of the other options in this dropdown. Then, we can pick in which order the posts will be displayed. You can choose between the default, descending, or switch it to ascending. It can play a bigger role than you may think. See? Switching the order made my list show a different set of categories. Next, we have the Hide Empty option. The choices here are yes or no. If we enable it, it will hide all product categories that don't have any products assigned to them. So, anything a visitor might click on and not get any results. 
Since I mostly have dummy categories, I'll switch this back. And below this, we have the additional parameters option. It's set to no, so it's disabled by default. But you can enable it by switching to taxonomy IDs. That way, you can enter the specific IDs of the product categories you want to show in your list. Just enter the numbers and make sure to separate each ID with a comma. You can find the category's ID by looking at its URL. Let me show you. I'll open this one as an example. And then if we look at the URL here, this number is the category ID. So you can copy it and then paste it within the taxonomy IDs field. Now, I'll type in the IDs of the remaining product categories as I know exactly which ones I want to show. Okay, there they are. And we can move on to the layout section. With the item layout option, we can decide what we want the product category items to look like in the list. The default, the one we see on the right, is info on image boxed. But we can switch to info on image, which looks like this, so the category name is no longer boxed. And there's also the option of info side width button, which creates this look. You have a button and a title, i.e. category name, next to the image. Mind you, there's a whole slew of style options that will let you adjust this look. This option is just for picking the general layout. And the one I want to use is this, info on image boxed. With that sorted, you can pick which title tag you want to use. You can pick anything from H1 to the P tag. And it will affect this text here, the product category name. I'm happy keeping this set to H5. Then we have the button section. Although there are options here, they won't work for me because I don't have a button. You'd have a button if you opted for the info side with button item layout. So if that's the one you're using, you have these options here for customizing the button. And you also have this section here, the button icon. You can use the options here to add an icon to your button and choose its position. The section underneath this, and the last one in the content tab, is the developer tools. When we open them, there's just one option here. Switching its setting to yes will get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Ok, now we can move on to the style tab, and its first section, which is also named style. With these options, we can change the title color. You can easily select any color you like. Besides that, we have the title typography options. Using them, we can change things like the font family for our product category title. Then we can change the font size. You can pick whether the value will be in pixels, ems, rems, or the viewport width. After that, the weight option allows us to choose from a range of values to set the font weight. Then there's the text transform option if we want to change the look of our title. And we also have the style option for turning the title, for example, italic. Alongside that, there's the decoration option if we want to add a line over, under, or through the title. Finally, we have the line height and letter spacing options. And that's it for the title typography settings. After that, we have the title box width option. As its name suggests, and as you can see, it lets us change the width of the box containing the product category name. I'm going to set 184 pixels for this. And there's also the title padding, which can be used to affect the box. When I increase the values here, I get more space around the title text, which in turn affects the box. Since I don't want to have the same values on all sides, I'm going to click here to delink the fields and set 19 pixels at the top and 19 pixels at the bottom. And that's all. The last option in this section is the title background color. And with it, we can change the color of the box containing the title. Very straightforward. After that, we have the button style section. This serves to help us style a button, if we have one. Just as a reminder, you'd get a button with the info side with button item layout. And then you can use these options to style that button. There are options you get for the regular button display and for the display on hover. Since none of these will work for me as I don't have a button, I'm going to move on. But in case you need help with any of these, you can check out our tutorial on the key add-ons button widget where we take an in-depth look at the different things you can do with a button.
And actually, what I just said applies to the next few sections as well. The button icon style is there if we added an icon to our button and we wanted to stylize it. Then the button inner border style, okay, it's empty because 1. I don't have a button and 2. I wouldn't necessarily be using the right button type. For those of you using a button, it would have to belong to the type called with inner border for you to get the options here. And the same principle applies to the section below. The button underline style options become available for those using a button who also enabled an underline for the button text. Again, if in doubt, check out our video on creating buttons. I'll leave you a link to it in the description below. Ok, so moving on, we have the image style section. We can use it to set an overlay for the images in the list. Just pick whichever color you like and add a degree of transparency and voila! And there are also some settings for the hover display. They include the overlay hover color. So same thing as before, pick the color you like and it will appear on hover. Don't forget to add a degree of transparency if you want to keep the image visible. Ok, next to that we have the image hover option. That's the effect you get by hovering over an image. By default it's set to zoom in and it looks like this. To accompany it we have the zoom origin which lets us pick which area of the image will be the focus of the zoom effect. Right now it's set to center, so it looks like this, but we can change that to the top which gets us this look, or the bottom which looks like this. Then there's left with this look and finally right, that's like this. I'll leave that setting for now as I want to show you how it looks with zoom out, the other image hover setting that you can combine zoom origin with. But there are other image hover settings too. There's move which creates this effect and there's none which introduces no change on hover. I'll use the original setting, zoom in, and set it back to originate in the center. Ok, the look is back. This brings us to the final section here, the spacing style. We have one option here and that is the title bottom offset. It lets us move this box containing the title up or down. I'm happy keeping it set to default so I'll clear this and update to save my work. So this is my product category list. It has all the things like hover behavior, layout and colors that I wanted. As you've seen, it takes very little time to get this element ready for use on your site. And it's extremely easy to use. Now, as we finish up this tutorial, I'd like us to take one last look at the page we started from. The one with examples of the different product category list designs that you can create with this widget. These examples are here to give you an idea of what you can do, to serve as a starting point or an inspiration. How and whether you use them is up to you. The important thing is that you now know what options you get with the product category list widget and how to use them. Knowing this will let you easily create your own product category displays while making sure they match your planned or existing site design. We hope you found this tutorial helpful and that you will shortly be trying out the product category list widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.